let's talk about data and in particular visualization and preparing data so that you can operate on it later. There are a couple of techniques that are kind of useful and one of them is uh, looking at the values that you have in data and kind of like trying to find out if there's anything that sounds out of place or not normalized. So imagine for example if you have a dates column with different dates of different formats probably that's not going to help because when you're trying to either create a, a, a plot like visualize it later or if you want to create a machine learning model then you need to have data that is normalized that everything's the same so because you're going to make assumptions on it similarly when you use visualization techniques it's kind of like the same deal you're trying to see if there's anything odd about the data that way when when you're trying to make an analysis or a judgment based on what you're seeing well you want to make sure that everything is in place we're going to use two libraries today and these libraries is um, our pandas for the part of uh, interacting with the data itself and for the visualization part we're going to use matplotlib let's get started let's use the ml for beginners curricula in, in in specifically the lesson about regression and in within regression we're going to drill down to data which is what we're going to be doing today all right so this is the uh, github.com slash microsoft slash ml for beginners repository and we're going to use these to play around with data do some visualizations and and perhaps prepare data see if we can find some of those abnormalities in data that are going to cause us problems. I'm going to fix that. So in the uh, lesson two for regression, which is data in particular, uh, we're going to do the data visualization part and we're going to use, uh, we're going to use these uh, in particular, we're going to look at the notebooks and the, and the data that is available to us to kind of like play around with it. For what we want to do here, we're going to open Visual Studio Code. Uh, one way to open it is if we go to the terminal, uh, I'm here in the ML for Beginners repo, and I can say code, and then dot, meaning, hey, open Visual Studio Code right here. So let's do that. And Visual Studio Code will open. This is the, the, same, the same readme. I don't want to install this extension. This is the same readme that we were seeing from the repository. These are the same files. I'm within, sorry for the scro scrolling, uh, I'm within data right here. And I am going to go through uh, some of the operations that we're going to do on, um, on the data. So uh, data, and then we're going to open uh, the first thing that I want to show you is actually looking at the data. So there's a directory called data. And there are, uh, there's a CSV there with uh, a bunch of information. So if I click here, um, this is kind of useful, but I'm going to close it for now. We're not going to install an extension right this second, but I want to show you how the CSV file looks like. The CSV file has, uh, well, first line, you should probably are aware of this, that you have your, your headers, your titles for the columns, uh, city name, type, package, variety, but this is hard to like take a look. Right? This is hard to like see what's going on. There's a bunch of commas. Well, it's not meant to be uh, looked at you know, like this. So if I quickly go back to the GitHub repo, you can see that GitHub actually does a pretty good job at this. Let me go back to regression, I think. Go to regression. There's data. And here we have the pumpkins, uh, US pumpkins CSV file. So if I click here, we get this very nice table representation. You can actually search the file. Uh, this is this looks pretty nice. And what we were seeing was the, like that raw representation. If I click here, this is what we were seeing on VS Code. I mean, it's fine if you want to take a look, a quick look at this, but it's not very useful because what you want is to I don't like see it in a table because then you can see that whoa like type is almost like type column is pretty empty why would i have type there uh, there's a variety with some some empty values um, and so to do that on vs code let's uh, open vs code again we're having these we're going to 
want to install an extension to help us out. So we go to the extensions over here and I can say CSV and a bunch of different things will start popping up. Uh, there, there are a lot of different extensions that you can, you can actually use to get uh, uh, visualization uh, done. I believe there's one um, that is this Excel viewer. Now, don't get, don't get um, distracted by the name. I think it's pretty useful. You can pick any other that you may want or just use basically GitHub straight, uh, uh, straight out. So I've just installed this one. I'm going to go back to my uh, files over here. I'm going to open these. And now I'm going to click this button that opens the preview. There you go. So this is pretty nice because it lets me uh, see a bunch of the different values that I have here, uh, different useful values. I can, I can even scroll or change the filtering with ascending or descending, and it does that very good. So that happens, that is all good, but let's start actually working on this data so that we can do things. Um, like cleaning up and preparing it so that we can do some visualization uh, exercises. We, I'm going to be using the solution uh, Python notebook. And uh, for these, um, it's, it starts the Jupyter server right away. And uh, it picked up the right Python interpreter. I have a an environment specific for these that has uh, some of the libraries that we're going to use today in salt already. So here you can see I'm using Python 3.8.12 and it's using Conda behind the scenes. If you wanted to change change that, you click here and you use uh, one of the other interpreters. You can see that I have a, a, a few different ones that you can pick. Um, and uh, in this case, it's the regression Conda one, which is the currently selected. So that works well. I've already pre-installed pandas and map.lib, which are the ones that are we're going to be using today. If I click play, that should work right away. And um, I'm gonna try to make this a little bit, a little bit bigger, so that we can have a little bit more room for visualizing what we're trying to do. So what we're doing here is we're loading this CSV file. And here with the with the pandas, panda has been imported as PD, which is very common, and it's going to read the CSV, which is data US pumpkins. So this is a, using a relative uh, relative path, meaning like two directories up, then find the data directory, and then drill down into finding the CSV file. Then it um, looks at um, looks at the uh, specifically at the pumpkins and uh, anything that is uh, bushel in, in package and does a head. Head basically will output a little bit of information. The first uh, few values, I think it's five. There we go, yeah. The first few uh, five values of that. So what are we seeing here? Well, what we're seeing is um, not only that this is sold from Baltimore, uh, but we're seeing that there's quite a bunch of, uh, quite a few, um, not a number, um, cells. So why, why is this important? Like why, why should we, uh, why should we care? Well, uh, we should care because it, like if you're trying to answer some questions, uh, it might, it, this might be disruptive to what you're trying to do. Um, so if we go here and click, uh, try to um, look at what columns uh, are, or, or what what are we seeing? Yeah, what columns have like a bunch of different uh, types of uh, null values? Then you will see that we have here several different ones that have null values. So this goes into pumpkins, and then is using the is null uh, function call or method call, and and then sum so like it can just uh, add everything up and give you like a nice overview. So we have type, we have 406 cells that are not a number, basically are empty or have like a, a not a number value associated with it. So this is good because it gives you, now we're starting to do some exploratory work. 
this is exploratory work. We're looking at data, like how does how does this CSV is um, behaving? Um, let's let's uh, let's let's find how how this is uh, working for us. So now we need to do um, several different different things um, to 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 try and wrangle these these data. First off, we want to select a few columns in particular. Package month, low price, high price, and date have been pre-selected for us. This you can you can toy around which ones you think are useful. And here we are dropping any column that is not easy. This kind be, can be like a little bit like confusing because you have several different columns and you're saying, well, I want everything that is that are not these columns. So it's kind of like a, a, a negation of a proposition and that can, might be a little bit tricky to, to get. But if you think about this in just like a simpler, in simpler terms, it means anything that is in the new columns, that's what I want. And, and you have some code here that will say, hey, uh, if you're not this part of these columns, like just drop them. I don't want to deal with them. Then you need to have a um, you need to have like an average. So we're 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 setting these these price and we're saying what's the low price and what's the high price. And uh, now we're doing a little bit of cleaning with converting the the day to its month only. So it's it's not it doesn't care about you don't you don't care about if it's like. Uh, the first of the month or the 30, 30th of the month, the last day of the month, and you want to normalize by month. So now you have, you're going to create a new data frame with this uh, data. And we have month package and we're selecting what pieces of, of the data are useful for the new columns. Finally, we're going to do some conversions. And again, this is kind of like uh, useful because you're starting to see that we're trying to normalize, you know, convert a price if the package contains fractional bushel values. So if it's one, uh, one and one ninth, then you, what you want to do is get um, the price divided by uh, one plus one ninth, and that gives you, uh, gives you the basically gets rid of the fractional fractional values. Um, and uh, it, it will give us the new the new pumpkins uh, pandas data frame. So let's click that. And we have a few that are uh, getting us a good a good price. And we're seeing the high price, the low price and the the the, the price overall. So 415 rows. A uh, couple of things to note here. We have month. We have package, low price, high price, and price. So that's that's uh, five or five columns here, and we have the index over there. So in month, you can see that we've normalized to numbers only, and and we we did we did the 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 exercise of just dropping everything else. So let's start plotting with what we have here, and we are going to use PLT. If I scroll back up, this is something that might be surprising to you. If I scroll back up, you have matplotlib that pyplot as plt. So we are naming our import as plt, and we're naming our pandas import as pd, which is very common. But you will see these. If if you're surprised by these, you it, you'll see it's very common to have this sort of import, import named imports. In this case, pyplot as plt. So let's go all the way down, and we will see our uh, exercise for visualizing. So we have price, and we're selecting the price column from new pumpkins, and we have month, new pumpkins, month, and we're going to use plt, scatter, price, and month, and then show. So if I click that, we have month here on the left. So you have a, a um, 8.5, 10, 10.5, 11. So we have the the month, and here we have the prices. So you can see that as um, uh, you know, you have 50 over here, and that's right around at month nine and between my month October. So we could we could actually find all the relations. And if you want to say, well, I don't want price and month, 
I want to have, how about high price? We can do high price over there. We click this one. Oh, high price is not defined. This is because um, uh, variable here will need to be defined. So if we do high price equals new pumpkins that um, I think is, I think is high price. Let's take a look. I think it, w it should be high price, I think. Let's try that. Oh, no. So let's try something that we know for sure. So we have month package. We can try package. And we'll rename our uh, variable. There we go. And then we can call these instead of high price, which I was trying to, we can call this package. And we can say, and let's, so now you're start, starting to, uh, trying to, to deal with, uh, trying to play with data and see what you get and see what, what are some of the things that you can do. And so you, you're, this is all getting mangled up because you can see cartons, baskets, and what type of uh, bushels you're dealing with. And and so you, you, you start finding things that I was like, well, perhaps this is not that good. This is pretty useful because it can convert uh, things, uh, but we don't want to do that uh, pretty useful uh, feature. You can actually save save the, the output. All right, so exploratory data, you're plotting some graphics and you're seeing what you can do. Um, so now let's uh, run these and then you can start labeling. So here, PLT, the Y label, pumpkin price, and pumpkin prices starts appearing here. So now you see that month is over there and uh, it gives you like a nice bar. So that's it. We've, we've gone through several, several different parts of dealing with, with data. Why, what does, um, uh, looking inside the CSV file looks like. We've dropped some, some columns that were not interesting to us. We've normalized a little bit of the data. And then we started doing a little bit of graphs. We did the bar graphs and, and we did uh, also the, the, the plotting of some graphs. We got into some trouble there by trying to change some of the interesting columns that we wanted to show. And overall, we were uh, able to do some exploratory work around data that it was uh, pretty useful.